So what I've got here then is a uh, couple of experiments that I want to show you and I've been doing these as part of uh, two videos that I will be releasing over the next couple of weeks and the first one is uh, to do with a uh, short dipole antenna. These are really really common and what I've got here is a uh, commercial version purchased off eBay for about 50 pence and what I've done I've modified the driven element so I can extend it out to uh, 31 millimeters then bring it back down again to 25 millimeters just to show the uh, difference that uh, a 31 millimeter measurement will make with a uh, dipole like this because I get a lot of comments where people say you know uh, 25 millimeters is uh, not the correct wavelength for uh, 2.4 gigahertz but uh, this particular design of antenna uh, makes it a little bit shorter so I can show that here with uh, this little uh, experiment that I've set up here so what I've done then I've got uh, the end of a uh, cheap telescopic aerial and uh, measured that off and uh, soldered it on to the main driven element of this uh, little antenna here and I've got a little bit of plastic on the end here so I can extend it and then uh, retract it again so you can see the uh, frequency response there on the spectrum analyzer as I do that so what you're looking at on the spectrum analyzer is uh, it's centered on uh, 2.4 gigahertz here so this V here this is the range that you would expect uh, for Wi-Fi these uh, two little peaks here that are rather annoying are uh, my neighbor's router that's uh, scanning between uh, channels 1 and 3 on the uh, Wi-Fi spectrum there's not a great deal I can do about that it's just interference from his router so at the moment then with a the little dipole at uh, 25 millimeters you can see the response on the spectrum analyzer is perfect for the frequency that we want on the 2.4 gigahertz but watch what happens when I extend uh, this uh, driven element on this dipole out to 31 millimeters just watch what happens on the uh, spectrum analyzer so I've drawn it out to 31 millimeters I'll just refresh the screen and you can see there this is uh, 2.4 gigahertz and uh, this is 1 gigahertz sweeping to 3 gigahertz so here is uh, about uh, 1.5 gigahertz so it's way back to the uh, frequency response that we actually want so if you made this little dipole with the uh, driven element at 31 millimeters it's not going to work very well for 2.4 gigahertz now I've got this little scale on here just to put it into uh, perspective a little bit I was hoping to uh, have these markers at one millimeter but um, they're a little bit wider than one millimeter basically from uh, the beginning of the scale here to the end is uh, six millimeters so I'll just move it back a little bit like that and then we'll refresh the spectrum analyzer and you should be able to see that response start to move back over onto this side so I'll move it back just a little bit more and now you can see it's starting to get a response over here which is uh, where we want it So now that response is getting a little bit better but we're still getting uh, an equal response over on the other side probably about uh, 1.8 gigahertz there so you know both uh, responses there are going to interfere with each other and uh, although you've got a good response here it's still not great you know it would be an okay antenna but it's still not really a great antenna so we'll move it back just a little bit more and now we're starting to get there we're getting that nice V shape now in the frequency response that we want and the V shape on the opposite side here has all but disappeared and just move it that extra millimeter and a half refresh the screen and now we're getting a really good frequency response over here where we want it and uh, the frequency response over on this side has now disappeared so I thought that'd be a really good example just to show you the small measurements that you need to do to get a really good antenna as opposed to a uh, okay antenna 
and definitely with uh, one of these antennas if you did measure it off at uh, 31 millimeters as I've just shown on the uh, spectrum analyzer it wouldn't work at all and basically the uh, experiments that I've uh, done using that little adjustable dipole there has uh, helped me to come up with this dipole that I'm going to be showing you in uh, the future video uh, probably uh, next week I'll be releasing it and uh, the measurements that I've used to construct this dipole probably I wouldn't have you know use that those measurements without doing these experiments especially for the end driven element here it's rather short to what uh, is traditionally used in a uh, design like this and the uh, loading coil as well uh, I wouldn't have used a coil with so few turns it's quite a short loading coil but it's also quite wide and uh, long and you can see here the frequency response on the spectrum analyzer really where we want it there really got a nice spike there and because that spike comes right down quite low uh, without uh, attaching it to the network analyzer and doing some more in-depth uh, measurements I can tell you that's a uh, extremely low VSWR right about there and without experimenting with that adjustable dipole antenna I would have never have come up with the measurements for uh, this uh, dipole antenna here that I've uh, settled on especially this uh, end piece here the end driven element I would have said but you know looking at that it was far too short but obviously on the spectrum analyzer it's uh, virtually spot on and this is the uh, second experiment that I want to show you I've been uh, playing around trying to uh, see if I can perfect the X-Wing Yagi antenna any more than uh, I had previously and uh, basically I've got the main driven element here but that's not the uh, issue that I want to show you although the uh, main driven element is uh, slightly shorter again than the standard quarter wavelength and uh, I've gone with this square uh, shaped one here rather than the round one I'm getting a much better response using the square one and the quarter wavelength that I've used for the driven element is uh, slightly shorter at uh, 30 0.5 millimeters so it's very similar to the wavelength that I use for a uh, cantenna or my cantenna anyway with the uh, dimensions of the tube but I want to show you uh, how you know I position the uh, driven element along the boom here how that can uh, affect the uh, frequency response of the Yagi antenna and uh, it affects it in quite a uh, large way much greater than uh, I thought it would have done so at the moment I've got it lined up with that black line that you can see there on the boom and that's the position that I used uh, in the previous X-Wing video copying the measurements from that Yagi antenna that I picked up and you can see here I'll just refresh the spectrum analyzer the frequency response there it's uh, quite a nice response and uh, you know it's got a nice dip to it but what I'm going to do is move the driven element a little bit closer the, to the first parasitic element and uh, we'll see what happens so now we're getting a much nicer frequency response and uh, you can see how it dips down here that's going to be uh, an extremely low VSWR and it's also moved the response uh, this way a little bit as well so it, the position on the boom does play uh, quite a large factor into the frequency response and I didn't think that would happen I thought it would play a uh, small part in the uh, VSWR response of the antenna but it's also affecting the uh, centre frequency of the antenna so I'll move it a little bit closer now so it's quite close to that first parasitic element there and again you can see the frequency response has shifted now this uh, centre here is 2.4 gigahertz so it's shifted that way and uh, that's just with uh, moving it along the boom so let me move it all the way to the end quite close to the reflector and we'll see what happens then so now I'm getting a excellent frequency response can you see that dip there that means it's going to be an excellent VSWR and it's bang on where we want it so having the uh, main driven element closer to the reflector does make this a slightly better antenna with uh, a slightly better VSWR I will have to measure this on the network analyzer but just going by the pattern here and the frequency response I can tell you that that is an excellent VSWR and I wouldn't have got that without uh, experimenting here with this little setup 
on the the position of the uh, main driven element and especially how it can affect the uh, center frequency of the antenna i didn't think it would do that but uh, obviously as i've just shown here it does